Okay, Eric, you won your game today. Must be feeling good. You beat um, Nino Matsyashvili. Tell us something about the game. Yeah, um, I mean, the adrenaline is still kind of wearing off. Uh, finished not too long ago. Um, yeah, chess is emotionally exhausting. Mm -hmm. um, it's my first event in uh, several months, and I've been, uh, been trying to keep my energy levels up. Uh, the game was interesting. I was a bit surprised out of the opening, like she was clearly more prepared, but I still got a position that I was somewhat comfortable with and, and knew some ideas. And uh, at some point, things just turned in my favor and uh, found a lot of kind of nice strategic positional moves, put on a lot of pressure, and then eventually she she blundered and I got some material advantage, so. Of course, you're a very well-known streamer. And now here you are again, playing over the board classical chess. Does that feel like a shock to the system after all your streaming activities? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely uh, a little bit of a shock to, uh, rather than just playing Blitz online and interacting with Twitch chat to, to play a, a long classical game. I mean, all my games so far have been uh, over three and a half hours. So it's, uh, it's tough, but it's also refreshing. It's, it's nice mm -hmm. to just put your whole energy into to playing um, hopefully a, a good quality game. And um, I, I've definitely missed playing over the board chess in, uh, in recent months over the last couple of years. So it's great to be back. Did you feel rusty when you sat down the other day for your first game? And do you think you're getting rid of some of that ring rust now? Yeah, a little bit. Um, it's, it is weird moving three-dimensional pieces. Um, and I think there's some confidence issues where just because I'm, I'm rusty and uh, a bit lower confidence than I would be if I was playing more, uh, it, it causes me to, to think more and, and second guess myself and that can lead to time trouble. So trying to overcome it and um, first several games have been a good warm up and hopefully I can get in my, uh, my peak form. Okay, how did you enjoy coming to Gibraltar? Is this your first visit here? It is, yeah. It's, it's yeah. a tournament that's been on my bucket list for years and uh, Unfortunately, I've never made it until <laughs> this year, and yeah. it's been great. Arrived yeah. a few days early, uh, still recovering from jet lag a little bit, but had a chance to hike up the rock, see the monkeys, went to a wildlife preserve, and, and saw more interesting animals. So it's been great so far. Okay. Okay, let's have a look at your game. Sure. Okay, Eric, let's have a look at your game, which looks like a Nimzo Indian. You've just played Rook E8. Yep. Um, to be honest, I was terrified here uh, just because White has a, the typical stonewall attack. She pretty much blitzed out her moves up until this point. And it's very clear White has ideas of just destroying me on the queen side with g4, g5 possibilities and queen h3. And the move she played was queen h3, mm -hmm. um, which not only targets h7, obviously, but also mm -hmm. d7. So there's already tactical threats here, like knight takes d7, queen d7, bishop h7. Wow. Yes. Um, so I had to be really, really careful. And the move I played was knight to f8, just trying to hold things together. Um, Overprotection I, of h7, or whatever they call it? Uh, yeah, overprotection. Mm -hmm. um, it, I know it's like it's one of the reasons to play with yeah. e8 is to get the knight in there. And then she surprised me with the move bishop to b5. Oh wow, change of direction. Which, yeah, and when she played this, I thought maybe I blundered something with allowing the bishop mm -hmm. or knight coming into c6. Um, but it turns out after rook e7, uh, the, the threats for white don't really add up add to up much. To much. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so what happened? Bishop d2, and then... I was able to just gain time on mm -hmm. the queen side if we just go ahead a few moves. Uh, okay, shall I just push it down to... Yeah, because she lost time moving lights for bishop a bunch. I'm not sure what happened there, but still. Okay, so she played bishop e1 there. Bishop e1, yeah. yeah it's, because um, I suppose with the stone wall, that bishop's never going to be a good piece, is it? It's one of white's worst pieces, right? Yeah. And yeah. Okay. 
Uh, but it has the idea of, of becoming yeah. a dangerous yeah. piece with bishop so to h4. Make, it makes sense. Yeah. And I took a lot of time in this position just because there's so many different options. Mm -hmm. Like I want to play queen b6. I also want to activate my knight with knight e6. I can throw in taking. I can take on c3 and play b4. Um, so I really didn't know how to approach just the thought process. And the move I played was bishop takes e3, oh, okay. which is maybe a bit counterintuitive because usually you want to wait until a3. Mm -hmm. um, but the point is, it's very concrete. Yeah. Uh, black or white can't take back with the bishop because after takes, there's issues on the c file. Uh, for example, takes, 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 and b4, I believe, just wins material. Okay, um, so it does. Yeah. So. She had to, if we just go back to the main line, she had to take back with the pawn. Another pawn on the dark square. Exactly, yeah. And uh, not well, only that, on but <laughs> I'm able really... to just get a, a preferable yeah. structure yeah. Yeah. after takes, okay. takes, and 94. Yeah. And yeah. you can start seeing how the position is, is beginning to kind of turn in my favor, really nice knight, mm -hmm. f6 is coming, and a uh, really ugly backward c-pawn for white. I can't see the board very well for them. this angle. Is bishop h4 a move here? So bishop h4 can be met with f6. And, th and then nothing. I, and, guess. Uh, I, must, I mean, to, to me, it looks slightly awkward having a pawn on f6, but I guess right. there's no, no refutation, there's no reason not to, not to play it. Yeah, yeah, f6, it's a move I want to play anyway, just to kick away to the kick knight. To kick the knight, of course. Right, yeah, and then have the, the e-file. Yeah, so you gain a tempo as well, so it's not a great plan. So she very quickly played rook d1, and next few moves I think were yeah. quite natural. f6, knight g4. Knight had to move, queen and the queen. King h8. And king h8 was, uh, it was a move that looks a bit strange, but the point is I want to take on c3 possibly. And I don't want to allow bishop h7 with check um, in the cases uh -huh. where there's tactics in the c-file. Okay. And uh, I want to have time for takes yeah. on c3 and okay. knight e2. So there might be a sort of intermezzo, in, intermezzo move after a check on h7 Right. Or also, yeah. the king is generally better yeah. on a dark square yeah. in this position, given the light square bishop. Also, the knight no, no longer has any yeah. po po possible it's not, checks. It's not doing anything there, is it? Yeah. So if we go forward okay. a few more moves. A few more moves. Yeah, so I start making progress start on the queen side. The queen side's moving, knight e3, rook d8, okay. Rook yeah. d8, defending the pawn, also preparing bishop c8 in some cases. Queen f3. Queen f3, and you played yeah, b4, b4 right. so. so the minority attack. Well, one yeah. actually isn't here, but um, yeah. So yeah, it feels like a minority one. attack, yeah. but uh, I'm very... I there wasn't a ball on b2 and I looked across the... <laughs> yeah, very the simply attacking yeah. the backwards yeah. pawn, yeah. Logical. which is pinned to the rook because the rook's not defended. Yeah. And I think the issue for white was just the peace harmony. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't great given that the rooks aren't connected and um, the, the pieces targeting d5, uh, they, they don't really mm -hmm. accomplish much. Yeah. Um, so here she played knight to f5. Knight to f5. Yeah. Which is very logical. It hits sure. a rook, it defends sure. a pawn with the queen. But after rook e8, okay. um, yeah, it, it's still not easy to find a good move for white, um, just still with uh, c file pressure. And this is where she made kind of the blunt, I think the game losing blunder, but I think it's already difficult, is rook to c2. Oh, yeah, 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 yes, I saw this position. And it's, uh... This, this is where, if you're watching on YouTube, black. pause the video, pause the video. and yes. find the winning move for black. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I already know because I've seen the position. But it's, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's maybe not so obvious, is it? It's a, so, it's nice yeah, it uses move. kind of the board geometry. Yeah, um, yeah. I had seen this move from, I think, like three or four moves back. Yes. So I, I was aware of the, the tactical idea. If the mm -hmm. rook ever goes to c2, then the bishop is um, a bit stuck, and yeah. the move is queen to d7. Yes, going back, I mean, is, was bishop a4 a move instead of the blunder? I was just looking at the position. Yeah, so I was more expecting bishop a4. Bishop a4. Uh, the idea is to yeah. just annoy just my annoy rook. Just annoy your rook, yeah. And I was going to play rook to e6, most yeah. likely, and also knight e7, but yeah. Um, yeah, after rook e6, there's still the issue with the, the c-pawn. And oh, I forgot to mention that when I play b4, of course I'm threatening c3, but I also have a secret threat. Okay, of bishop a6 to trap the rook. Ah, um, nice. 
So yeah, White's well, still under a ton of pressure here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, so after the dreaded Queen D7, it's so a problem Queen D7. She found, she found something here, didn't she? To yeah, so I thought that it was just a very clean winning of material, but after Queen G4, yeah. I realized, okay, I can't play E4 immediately because mm -hmm. then my Queen is overworked and mm -hmm. okay. it's tied down to G7. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. After, yeah, after Queen G4. Yeah, she played Knight D6, didn't she? I played knight d6. So the move I want to play is g6. Yes. Which just seems like it, it wins on the spot. Well, what, what, what do you think white does then? The, pro, the thing I couldn't figure out is knight h6. Oh, f5? Offering the queen trade. Yeah, f5. Um, so I'm still threatening the queen, still threatening a4, but then queen h4. Yeah, yeah. And it gets a little bit messy because now if I play a4, oh, yeah. there's Eight. takes. With a nice little. Takes and check. knight f7. Isn't it? I, th I thought it was mate, isn't it? Not oh, no, quite I'm sorry, mate. it's the knight that goes yeah. backwards. <laughs> uh, King g7. I spent a long time calculating this line. Knight takes d8. Yeah. Queen takes c2, oh. knight b7. I just, I, black's still probably yeah. better here, but I couldn't come to a definitive conclusion. There's a whole bunch of tactical exercises in this game. Aren't there? Yeah, and I think one of the oh, lessons nice. is you can't get too relaxed. Like I thought I was winning when I played queen d7, and then all of a sudden I have to start mm. Thinking again. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's not as easy as it looks, is it? So you played this. So knight d6, d6 and nice here, move. yeah, I'm, I'm just exploiting the pin. Okay. Um, and then she surprised me. Um, I was expecting, what was I expecting? Bishop a4? Where I got a, yeah. uh, basically two minor pieces for the rook after queen f5 takes and bishop e8, uh, which should be a winning endgame for black. Mm -hmm. But instead, she played oh, after knight d6. She, she just took captured, yeah. Knight takes e6. And for a moment, I thought I'd just overlook something. Because um, usually when a grandmaster gives you their queen, yeah, you have to think twice before taking it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the point was to just get two minor pieces for yes. the queen, which I was completely fine with. Yeah. And then after takes, uh, I think the rest of the game was pretty smooth conversion. Yeah. Um, so there is one moment at the end I'll just show you. Um, okay. Like three more, three moves before the end. Three moves. Knight b4. Okay, so we got to this position. Actually, one more move back. Oh, sorry, the other way. Yeah. Oh, down here we always have a problem. Oh, yeah. There we, go. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So we got to this position. This is move. This is my 40th yeah. move. Uh, coming up. Oh, coming her, up. Her, her, her 40th move. Her 40th move. Yeah. Yeah. And... Okay, if we look, I'm, I'm okay. very close to winning, but I had just played rook takes a2, and I missed knight b4, attacks both rooks, and it's one of these just time trouble oversights. Oh, wow, wow. Yes. Um, Thankfully, okay, there, there's probably multiple ways to win, but thankfully the, the cleanest way to win is to take on f2, rook f2, and rook b8. And okay. I win the piece. And yeah, nice. it's a nice thing about being up material is yeah. you have more more pieces to generate tactics. So. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, thank you very much, Harry. Thank you.